Hi, I'm Ian Parry, also known as 8PEC. The UK's number one benchmarking champion and currently ranked number one in the world on HWBot. HWBot is where all the world records are created on a database and you're earning points for submitting scores. Here at OC UK and Case King, I design a range of very high-end systems and also help design the systems all the way down so everyone gets performance at a great price point. So you recently set a bunch of world records, how did that come about? It came about actually through uh, a lot of hard work and attending an event at Cambridge. We knew for a while we'd be attending the event, so we modded some uh, Titan cards and practiced hard several benches on the Gigabyte X99 SOC Champion motherboard and we managed to take 15 different 3D world records all at the same event over three days of benching. But a lot of the work went in maybe two to three weeks prior to the event to make sure we knew the order of the cards, the setup of the motherboard and so on and so on so we could nail all the world records. Since the event I've also taken a further three world records with the same configuration of Titan X on the Gigabyte uh, X99 Champion motherboard. How many products do you normally look at in order to find the ones that it's possible to push to the limit? With the, uh, with the Titan X GPU, because of the expense of it actually, we, we couldn't go through that many GPUs to, to get the ones that we needed to mod. When you, when you mod these GPUs, you have to take off the, the current VRM that comes with the card so you can apply more voltage. And once you do that, obviously, you've invalidated warranty, etc. So we took maybe six GPUs and then tested each one in single card to work out what temperature the GPU liked, what voltage it liked, and how high it could go. And obviously then for single card world records, we picked the best single card, dual card the best two cards, and then for, for four card, the best four cards that have also got high memory capability. Because in four cards, the actual uh, CPU is becoming, and the system itself is becoming more the bottleneck. If you're talking 900 pounds a card, so you're talking something like 5,400 pounds just on graphic cards alone if you want to try and set a record. Yeah, I mean, at, at this level, obviously, you're competing against everyone who's, look, everyone who, who's got the same access to hardware, if you like, to, to set the record. So you always need the most efficient card at the time. And at the moment, the Titan X is like 40% or 30% better in these benches than the 980 and more so than the 290X. So you always have to aim at the high-end card, which always means a large amount of outlay. And not only do you need the, the expensive card, you also need the expensive CPU, 5960X, 8-core, 16 threads is scoring higher in physics. You need the high-quality RAM as well, uh, which you might go through a few sets to check that can do the timings that you need for the physics score and also again to remain stable in four-way. And then also you need a very high-end quality motherboard that's going to uh, give you the efficiency with the memory, support all four cards, have great power delivery to the CPU so you can get it as high as possible. Uh, and that's why the Gigabyte uh, X99 RC Champions actually such a great board because it's not as expensive as some of the competitors but it's offering a, 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 well actually surpassing the performance uh, at a very good price point so something we were talking about earlier before we started filming on the board you were saying that they've actually taken stuff off there's actually less on the board which actually makes what's on there easier to clock how does that work yeah if, i mean if you look at the board they've removed uh, four of the dim slots so you've only got four uh, which is what you need as minimum for quad channel. But because it's only got four DIMM slots and they're closer to the CPU, they're closer effectively to the IMC, the tracers need to be much shorter, which helps with efficiency of the memory and tuning of the memory and getting quality signal to the memory. Um, so that's one example of how it helps quite a lot. So from the first time you thought, I'll try my hand at overclocking to now, how much, of your engineering, how much has your engineering skill increased? Well, quite a lot, of course, uh, through helping companies such as Gigabyte, ASUS, MSI, with different things to help them with their BIOS and testing for them. Also, from uh, modding VGAs, I'm now able to solder power boards, help with VGA BIOS. An example being the event that we just did. I mean, we tested 15 extreme overclock BIOS to, to work out the correct efficiency that I needed. Um, so, yeah, of course, the, the more I get access to, to helping the large vendors, then the more I can uh, increase my own skill as well. But what do the extra pins do? They, 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 instead of being 20, 2011 socket, it's actually 2088 socket. And the extra pins uh, put, 
put different voltages to the memory controller and the cache, which means now you can get high cache and high memory. Uh, and not, it, essentially this. I mean, without the extra pins, your, ca your memory st stable, rock stable, is like limited to 2666 megahertz, realistically. And, and the cache cannot really, on any CPU, go above 3.7. Now with the extra pins, I can go like 5G on cache, with, on, on LN2, and I can go like 3400 memory. Although I never do, I always go around like 3000, but like C11, which is very tight for efficiency. Uh, but without the, without the pins, none of that's possible. It's at, it, in the Intel design socket, it's absolutely impossible. But it also helps for uh, like water and systems because you can gain that extra efficiency on your systems by pushing the cache like to 4, 4G, 4.2 quite easily, not doing anything extra. The auto settings are going to do that. And you can also, like I said, use higher memory. Not necessarily so tight timings as you would on LN2. For, for stability, you can use like 30, 3400, no problem, C15, 3200, C15, 3000, C13, quite easily really with the, with the socket without impossible. So obviously you've burnt through the world records with the X99 board. Um, does it have a practical application? Does that kind of technology have an application, say for example, in video processing? Yeah, of course. I mean, this board is a great overclocking board no matter what cooling you decide to use or for what application. Uh, on like a good air cooler, 4.2, 4.3 is, is very easy on a 5960X with a good quality air cooler. On water, if you get the right chip, you can go like 4.7, 4.8, no problem like with high memory speed and high cache, which is all going to help your rendering. Um, currently, this board is holding the world records for Cinebench, which is close to rendering as you get in the be benchmarking marking world. Uh, and I can like run Cinebench at like 5.8, uh, quite easily with the cache at like over five, over five G and the memory at like three point two on LN two, but this does filter down to water cooling and air cooling accordingly. And and any, you know, any of the boards here with like the OC socket that Gigabyte have designed, you can really push up the cache, which does have a, a real advantage to rendering. You need that memory bandwidth, and that's what it's giving you. This uh, this motherboard here is in the eight pack Polaris system, and that's got a six core. 12 thread uh, 5930K CPU in it uh, and 16 gig of, of DDR4. Uh, the CPU is overclocked at a minimum of 4.7 gigahertz and the uncore, which is the cache, is, is at least four, but we're pushing like 4.2, 4.375 around this on the current system that you'll see in a little while. And we've got the Predator memory by Kingston, which you see here in the system, also in, in the 8-pack Polaris system, and that's at like over 3,000 megahertz C14. So everything in there is on water cooling, but the clocks are very, are very, very high. So you're taking what you've learned, setting multiple world records, bringing it down just a little bit for stability and then making it available to professional users. Exactly that, exactly, exactly what you've just said, yeah. We're, we're, and we're hand selecting the components to go in those systems. So every motherboard, every CPU, every RAM stick that goes into all those systems has been heavily tested for stability, high-end overclocking and efficiency. So it's not just gigahertz or clock, or megahertz faster, it's clock for clock faster too. So an 8-pack system, you know, at 3 gigahertz, for example, would be 5% faster than X system at 3 gigahertz, for example. But obviously we're pushing, like I said, 4.7 uh, and beyond on, on uh, Z97 systems. X99, obviously, you've got a CPU which is creating more heat, so like 4.7, uh, 4.8 on a 6-car 12-thread, 4.6, 4.7, Sometimes close to 4.8 on a on a eight core 16 thread.